This video is brought to you by Captivating History. The fall of Constantinople in May of 1453 marks a turning point in European history. The Ottomans went from formidable adversaries to a dominant power in one fell swoop. Control of southwestern Europe meant that they could use their navy to capitalize on maritime trade across the region. With their economies dwindling and authorities challenged, European kingdoms were looking for novel ways to eke out a living and, if possible, tip the balance of power in their favor. Necessity breeds creativity. The European powers wanted to bypass the Ottomans and play by their own rules. Thus began a series of expeditions and voyages to chart remote lands, going where no European had dared to go before and discovering civilizations hitherto unknown. This adventure began as a great European experiment but eventually turned into a calculated system of exploitation and polarization across the globe. This is the Age of Discovery. Let's travel back to 15th century Portugal, where a prince named Henry, or as he later came to be known, Prince Henry the Navigator, encouraged exploration across the Mediterranean southern shore. He is often regarded as the progenitor of the Age of Discovery. By the mid-15th century, the Portuguese had started to make great strides in navigational technology. Technologies like astrolabes, magnetic compasses, the caravel, and sextant further helped fuel the passion for exploration. This passion manifested itself in the European desire to head into Africa. Africans were rich in food, gold, and slaves, as exemplified by the Malian king's Hajj to Mecca in the years 1324 to 1325. Moving along the coastline, the Portuguese started to kidnap African locals to sell into European slave markets. In 1488, another Portuguese explorer, Bartolomeu Dias, rounded the Cape of Good Hope, one of the southernmost points of the African continent, essentially paving the way for the establishment of sea routes between Europe and Asia. Now that reaching the Indian Ocean was not an issue, another Portuguese explorer, Vasco da Gama, made his way from Lisbon to Calcutta in India. The goods used in China and Southeast Asia were fascinating to European eyes, and they quickly developed a liking to the different luxuries of the continent. And with that, Portuguese colonization was well underway. In Africa, they had developed fortresses and trading posts along the coastline. They established their presence in Asia by capturing Goa and Malacca. The former served as their main base for almost four centuries. By controlling trade routes across the coastline and avoiding Mediterranean routes and, consequently, the Arabian Peninsula, Portugal turned from a poor kingdom into one of the richest countries of its time. In the late 15th century, a young Italian man by the name of Christopher Columbus was living in Lisbon. He had a keen interest in geography, astronomy, and history. The aura of exploration attracted him, and the idea of traveling to Southeast Asia through the Cape Route became more and more appealing to him. When his efforts in Portugal failed, he lobbied in multiple kingdoms to sponsor his voyage. The Catholic monarchs in Spain agreed to fund his travels, and he finally set sail. In 1492, he landed on an island in the Bahamas, now called San Salvador, where he captured a handful of slaves. Word of the discovery quickly spread throughout Europe. No one knew the size and shape of the American land, so ambitious sailors took to the seas after Columbus, exploring the American land from one end to the other. The English were trailing in the search for new lands, so Henry VII in England arranged for an Italian navigator, John Cabot, to find a course for Japan from the west. In 1497, Cabot set off from Bristol and reached modern-day Canada. The British finally had a foothold in the Americas. In 1519, Ferdinand Magellan, a Portuguese explorer, led the Spanish expedition to the East Indies, during which he circumnavigated the globe. By achieving this substantial feat, he discovered the interoceanic passage connecting the Atlantic to Asia. After discovering the Straits in South America in 1520, he sailed across the Pacific and was killed by Philippine locals in 1521. Most of Europe now had access to both Asia and the Americas. Pre-Columbian America was a vastly different land than the Europeans had ever imagined, mostly because of two major civilizations. The Aztec Empire, a kingdom of abundant wealth and superstition, had controlled most of Mesoamerica since 1325 CA. In 1519, Spanish conquistador Hernán Cortés landed on the coast of present-day Mexico and started moving inland. He allied himself with some indigenous factions and massacred and plundered others. 
His exhibition was recalled, but Hernan chose to ignore the warning. The governor of Cuba even sent emissaries to arrest Hernan, but his troops, along with the indigenous tribes, fought and won. He married a local woman named Dona Marina, who proved pivotal in the conquest that followed. He finally reached Tenochtitlan, the center of the Aztec Empire, where the Spaniards gawked and gaped at the wonder of the New World. After he defeated the Aztec Empire, his prestige grew and the charges of mutiny were removed. In South America, Spanish conquistador Francisco Pizarro was leading a campaign against the Incas. The Incan Empire was based in the Andes Mountain of central Peru and was a large empire of around 16 million people that extended around 2,500 miles from north to south. The Incas had built a thousand miles of roads and facilitated transport and commerce within the empire. In his third expedition to Peru in 1532, he captured the Incan emperor and executed him. With the appearance of Europeans, diseases also started to spread, especially diseases that were alien to the immune systems of the locals. Historians estimate that disease and conquest wiped out about 90% of the Native American population. Iberian conquests begot conflicts between Portugal and Spain, and the Pope had to sign a treaty to settle the disputes. Spain received the better end of the deal, but other nations, including France, Netherlands, and England, refused to acknowledge the treaty. In the late 1570s, Francis Drake initiated the British incursion into the Pacific Ocean and, by doing so, gave birth to conflict in the western coast of the continent. He also managed to circumnavigate the world and received a knighthood for the accomplishment. What started as a search for new lands and resources had taken quite a nasty turn. By the beginning of the 17th century, European nations had taken a liking to the idea of colonization and exploitation of the rest of the world. By chipping away at the ends of the ends, they slowly changed the face of modern politics and economics. Whereas Africa was wealthy and majestic before Western involvement, it was a home to poverty, slavery, and death after it. Similarly, the New World witnessed a perpetuated mass genocide of the Native Americans. The Aztec and Incan empires were among several civilizations the colonizers wiped out. The African slave trade continued to destroy the lives of African generations as they were subjected to inhumane treatment in America long after the British retreated from the colonies. Over the years, indigenous scholars have taken issue with the use of the word discovery for the sake of periodization since it negates the presence of indigenous civilizations. In Asia, the British East India Trading Company and the Dutch East India Company entered Indonesia, Japan, Taiwan, Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam, and the Indian subcontinent. Dividing people across religious and discriminatory lines was often the core policy of imperialism. The Spanish did it in the Americas, where they pit local groups against each other. Similarly, the motto of the British East India Company was divide and conquer, which they used to pit different religious factions in the Indian subcontinent against each other. India eventually partitioned along religious lines in the 20th century. The Age of Discovery has essentially formed the backbone of the modern world. Its effects are far-reaching and far more potent than you may think. The idea of a poor Africa or a rich Europe did not exist before it, yet it defines the spectrum of modern geography and politics. Racism, intense religiosity, and a distrust of the West are all remnants of a bygone era. Lenin famously called imperialism the highest stage of capitalism. The Age of Discovery was an exciting time for Europe, but navigating history from an indigenous perspective offers nothing but a look at the brutality and callousness of the European discoveries. To learn more about the Age of Discovery, check out our book, The Age of Discovery, a captivating guide to an era of exploration in European history, including discoveries such as Christopher Columbus's voyages to the Americas and Vasco da Gama's sea route to India. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Also, grab your free Mythology Bundle ebook while they're still available. All links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.